Good evening, booktube. It hasn't been 24 hours since I made a video, but like I said, I am alone until the 24th because my dear wife of 38 years is out in the Northwest uh, being with our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and their new baby, Marika Rose. And so I'm by myself, me and the Rudy ghost. Rudy was our dog of 13 years. He died in July. He had cancer and we had to put our little friend down. And uh, I really miss him. Uh, I was talking to my wife on the phone the other night, and we kept talking, oh, maybe we'll go to the Humane Society and get a rescue dog. And I, I said, nah, it's just too much work. I, I'm 65. Carol will be 65 in January of 2018. And, and I don't know. It's just too much work having a dog. My wife's allergic to cat hair. So we can't have cats. I always had cats when I was growing up. I always loved cats. We did have dogs. I remember off and on. But anyway, before we had Rudy, we had a dog named Macintosh, who was a West Highland Terrier. And he lived to be 13 years old. He became senile and he didn't know what was going on. He he would sleep and he didn't know what was so we just put him down. He was a good dog too. So we had dogs going on 26 years and so I don't know. Kids are gone. Kids are married. Having kids. It's just my wife and I here in the old hermit hut waiting for the second coming of Christ. So today is October the 17th. It's 2017. It's 8.57 here. Here in West Michigan. Just real close to Lake Michigan. I was thinking tomorrow, if the weather stays... Today it was sunny and windy and cloudy. It'd be perfect pictures to take at the lake. So tomorrow morning... Maybe I'll get the gumption to go out to the lake and take some photos. So uh, today, as I told you, I had to cover for somebody at the library used bookstore, the Book Nook. And um, in a way, it was kind of nice because I went to the Book Nook and it was very slow. Uh, when I was at the book nook, I read Fantasyland, How America Went Haywire, A 500-Year History of Kurt by Kurt Anderson. I read that, and I wandered the store. And the lady who was there who, she's a volunteer too, she gets the books that have been donated to the library, and she puts them in the store to be sold and she had cartloads of books and I went I went through the carts before they were priced and put it into the bookstore and I wound up buying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 16 used books. I wound up spending $45 at the book nook today. So uh, I'm not going to show all the books because that I got plenty of time. Like I said, my wife is gone. I can make videos every night. But what I would show you is just a few, just a couple uh also, I, I've been reading last night and tonight the ocean, Night Ocean, a novel by Paul LaForge. I started reading this last night. I've been reading it tonight. And I ended my diary today. 
on page 941. I don't think I'll write anything tonight. I'm kind of tired. It's 9 o'clock. I'll probably go to bed early. So, uh, I'm not going to show you all the used books. I got the book nook. I'm just going to show you two. One of the books was my free book. And this is my free book I got at the book nook for volunteering. It's called The Rubicon, The Last Years of the Roman Empire by Tom Holland. Uh, it says here in the back, in 449 BC, the 705th year since the building, founding of Rome, Julius Caesar crossed a small border river called the Rubicon and plunged, plunged Rome into catastrophic civil war. Tom Holland's enthralling account tells the story of Caesar's generation, witness to the twilight of the Republic and its bloody transformation in, into an empire. From Syria, Sparchius, Brutus to Cal Cleopatra, Virgil and Augustus, here are some of the most legendary figures in history brought thrillingly to life, combing verb, combining verve and freshness with scrupulous scholarship. Rubicon is not only an engrossing history of this pivotal era, but a uniquely portrait of a great civilization in all its extremes of self-sacrifice, uh, rivalry and decadence, and catastrophic intrigue, war, and world-shaking ambition. So I got that in my free book. I had a book already by Tom Holland in our library. This is called Persian Fire, The First World Empire and the Battle for the West by Tom Holland. And the second book I want to show you is a book I already had. And it's Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. I got this because of the cover. Uh, I like the cover. And it has a deckled edge. Just has this kind of cover. It's in perfect condition. This is the first edition I had. This one I came out, I think this is the first edition I read. This came out in 1974. That's when I first read this. And then at a used book sale, I got this edition by Thomas Pynchon, Gravity's Rainbow. So now I got three editions. I really like this edition. This, it's a Penguin Books. So I got three, three editions of it. Now I got to reread it. It's been like, I haven't read it since 1975. Another book I got that I had a, an, already a copy of, but I got it for the cover. It's called Off the Road, 20 Years with Cassidy Kerouac and Ginsburg by Carolyn Cassidy. To me, this is the best biography or memoir written by Carolyn Cassidy, who was married to Neil Cassidy, who was friends with Jack Kerouac and Alan Ginsberg. This, is, to me, is one of the best uh, biographies if you want to know insights into Ginsburg, Neil Cassidy, and Allen Ginsberg, this is the copy I had. I might have another copy. Off the Road, My Years with Cassidy, Kerouac, and Ginsburg by Carolyn Cassidy. I like this cover because on this cover is a picture of Neil Cassidy and Carolyn Cassidy when they were back in the 50s. Uh, so yeah, I really like this. There's a picture of Neil Cassidy when he was with Ken Kesey in the, in the bus. The Merry Pranksters. So yeah, I got two editions of that. 
And last of all, I was at on the way home from the book nook. I went grocery shopping. I stopped at thrift stores. And I won't show you the books I got at the Goodwill, but I bought at the Goodwill a collector's edition of Pulp Fiction. Uh, this is one of my... I just wanted this film. It's by Quentin Tornado. Tornado. Uh, this is the, for three dollars. It's a deluxe edition. Let's see, it has the deluxe edition. It's one of my favorite films. I've seen it several times, and when I was paying for my books, I saw it on the counter there, and I said, "How much is it?" And she said, "It's for three dollars. It's collector's a, a collector's edition." So, I got Pulp Fiction. I might watch it sometime this week. For the third or fourth time. So that's what's going on. Uh, I got a book in the mail, but I'll show that later. I got tons of books from the book nook. I'll show those tomorrow. I just want to make a video telling you that just showing some things and just breaking the monotony. You know, I'm getting kind of lonely and I don't watch TV. I'm kind of burnt out. I'm messing with the computer and I don't write at night in my diary usually, and I could listen to some music, but I don't know. I find myself lately just sitting in the dark, looking into the candle into a candlelight. You know, there's one thing I want to say. I keep there's this thing going over and over and over in my head, like a a broken record, and. And it's something, in a way, it's kind of a blessing, is that I don't have any intellectual interest. Now, what I mean by that is that I have come to a place where I am content not knowing anything, or not knowing all things. Now, I if you... You can see I read a lot of nonfiction. I read the Bible, I read commentaries, I read church history, I read, you know, be Lives of the Beatniks, and I read modernistic literature, and I read ancient history, and I read American history, and, and I read novels. But I really don't have this... Many years ago, I had this thing inside of me where I was always just craving, 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 craving. Always looking for something new, something I didn't know, or a new book, or a new commentary, or a new New Testament, or a new, com you know, whatever. And I, and I was so frustrated because I couldn't find anything really new. And then I came to a place, I don't know, a couple of years ago, where I was just content in the cloud of unknowing. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, I know God. I know Jesus Christ. I know reality. And I'm, a, and that's it. Uh, I'm content in that knowledge of no of unknowing. I mean, there, there's a point where you can know, and then beyond knowing, there's nothingness, or there's just the incomprehensible, the word, what you cannot put it into into language, into words. Sounds kind of mystical, but. So that's what I mean. I can sit here looking at this candle and I am sitting here in the cloud of unknowing. I'm sitting here content that I know God. I know what reality is. I know what the beginning and the end is. And there is a profound acceptance of that. There is a peace. Uh, you know, you know. I read. All, okay, you can see. It. I'm always buying books. I'm always reading. 
I just do that because to me that's the best way to spend the time that I have each day. If I'm going to do anything morning, afternoon, and evening, uh, I'm not into I'm not into housework. I'm not into f working on cars. I'm not into going to bars. I'm not into watching TV. I'm not into sports. I'm not into collecting stamps. Uh, I'm into reading. I love to read. I love books. And so that's what I occupy my time with. But I'm content and just sitting here in silence. So I don't know. It's, I don't know if I'm making myself plain. But, uh, so that's why I'm kind of like, like I'm, my wife is gone and I spend a lot of time just sitting in the presence of God in the cloud of unknowing, in the, the darkness of faith, in the dark night. I have ascended the Mount Carmel and I'm reaching for the summit. I am seeking perfection, union with God. I don't know. So anyway, I just thought I'd share these thoughts. Like I said, tonight I'll probably read some more of The Night Ocean, a novel by Paul LaForge. It is 9.12. I'll go to bed around 11 o'clock and tomorrow's a Wednesday. If it's sunny out, I'll probably get in my old Dodge van and drive out to the lake and take photos. Maybe I'll stop at some restaurant and have breakfast. and Maybe I'll visit thrift stores north of town and existence will keep flowing by. So I hope you're having a good week. Uh, thank you for the subscribers. Thank you for the comments. I have not been getting comments the last couple of days. But I know you're out there. So keep reading. Keep seeking the Lord. And uh, until next time, bye.